Welcome. We have a fun show on deck for you today. How many of you have a drawer that's starting to look like this? With a little buffalo and a little ranch and a little taco seasoning. What have you got in your drawer? Oh my goodness. Well, we, when I just fi fi uh, figured out what our drawer looked like, I hey, thought, uh-oh. How many of you? What are we going to do with this drawer of condiments? And then one of my followers said, you should make something out of the condiments. So that is exactly what we are going to do today. We are going to make two kinds of condiment overflow drawer meatloaf um, from COVID fast food. I think um, we have done a little too much of that, as I can see. Of course, teenager in, in the house who now has wheels. Um, he can go to drive through on his own, but it looks like the packages end up here. So I'm going to make um, meatloaf, and we are going to make two kinds, like I said. So we are going to start with basic um, meatloaf here. So in my bowl, I have beef and chicken and pork is in the bowl. So I'm going to start with that, and we are going to add our deliciousness here before I split it into two. I'm going to make two different flavors with all of our choices here on fast food drive through condiment heaven here. Hey, Rhonda, Patty, Janet, how are you guys? Thanks for watching. So to our basic meatloaf mix, um, I'm going to start with some garlic. And I have, oh, like about four cloves, maybe five of garlic going in. Because, you know, you never have too much garlic in my world. Yum! So garlic going in. And then I have two onions, of course, that I grated. And, ooh, whoops that I've grated, and they're going in. Uh, try to keep the juice in the meatloaf because it always adds, helps to add, keep it moist. Um, and like I always say, I always try and grate my uh -uh onion when it's going into things because um, I don't like big chunks of onion in my dishes, and neither does my child, so that helps with grating that. Um, and then I am gonna put some salt and pepper here, just in our base and get this mixed up here. You want to mix the meatloaf as little as possible. You don't want to stir and stir and stir it because then um, it gets really dense and I don't like that. It gets tough so you want to keep it light and fluffy. So I'm going to try and keep it light and fl fl fluffy here and then I'm putting in a healthy amount of the Lowry seasoned pepper which you guys know I love. So put a bunch of that in there. And that is yummy. And then, of course, in, I'm going to put four eggs in here as a binder and get the binder going on here. Hey, Rhonda, how are you, girl? How are your Saturday projects going so far today? I know you had a long list of things for today. I saw Lisa at the grocery store this morning when I went to get the meat. I needed some pork for my meatloaf here. Again, this is... Um, something that you probably have in your freezer because I pulled the ground beef and the chicken out and mixed up what what I had but pork really adds a lot to meatloaf uh, my mom's traditional meatloaf mix is ground beef uh, ground pork and ground veal if you ever see anything in the store they used to sell it in the stores it was called meatloaf mix um, I know they used to have that well that's what it was veal and beef and pork but this is chicken and pork and beef. And I always try and use at least half turkey or half chicken. Uh oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Hold on. Oh, nope. False alarm. <laughs> but I don't wanna sneeze all over the meatloaf. Um, where was I? Oh, to just for less calories. Less points, less calories if you add some turkey um, or some chicken into your beef when you're making meatloaf, you can sneak in less calories there with your family and they'll never know the difference. Hey Susie, how are you? I love all your baby pictures, they're so cute. Okay, so there's our basic mix up there, meatloaf mix. And I'm gonna add here four eggs as our binder here. I'm gonna crack these, crack them on the counter then you don't get eggshells in your whatever you're mixing on the side of the bowl. So little egg cracking hack there. Crack them on the table. So yes, 
What have you guys done today? I've already been to Montecito today to a birthday party. Very, very fun birthday party outside on the patio at Via Vi in Montecito. So very fun. Ladies' birthday party. We were very grateful to be there and to be out and having fun um, like the old days for celebrating a dear friend. So that was really fun. And now we're back. Okay, so let me get my eggs mixed in here. Like I said, I try and mix this, you know, as little as po as possible, but I want to get my meats mixed up there. Um, and then I'll add these eggs in. And then I'm going to split it up here. So in here we have salt, seasoned pepper, garlic, onion, and four eggs. And I'll just get this mixed up, and then I'm going to split it. Now, for it to mix a little easier, it's a little easier if your meats are room temperature and um, mine are not because I literally just walked in the door from Montecito <laughs> so they're a little cold which is why I'm using um, this otherwise I'd be in there with my hands but I'm being sanitary extra sanitary today with a device here oh my gosh yeah okay so I am not one to usually, I do not usually put a, a binder like breadcrumbs or something in my meatloaf, but today I'm going to, just because I don't really know what's going to happen with my flavorings I'm going to fla fla uh, flavor these with. So I'm going to make one with a little oatmeal and one with a little cornstarch as my binders. Because I always try and keep them gluten free if I can. And the second reason is, is I don't have any breadcrumbs in my cabinet. <laughs> you we are making fast food condiment meatloaf today so give you a way to clean out your condiment drawer which is what we are doing here today so in the bowl here I have basic meatloaf mix the beef the pork and this one is chicken with egg salt and pepper onion and garlic and I'm just going to split it in half and throw some in there and I'm going to make two flavors here so the first flavor we're going to make with our condiment shake up here is you can see what is plethora of things here in my mix is spicy buffalo which is the family favorite around here. So this one I'm going to make spicy buffalo. We're going to throw a couple of those in here. So spicy buffalo. I'm going to need a few of these. I don't know what brands these are but all the different places. <laughs> going in here what's your favorite condiment of course my favorite one here always Taco Bell hot classic favorite there you go but I'm not using that here today I guess I'm going to use the ones of these condiments that I can get open <laughs> so there's a little Chick-fil-a bu uh, buffalo going in oh and here's some Frank's so I don't know who does Frank's but Frank's again family favorite on the Franks. So we will put this one in here. Yum. Oh yeah. And what's meatloaf without a little mustard? So I think we got to put a little mustard in here. So I got my scissors out to make this go a little faster. So a little bit of mustard there just for background flavor. And I'm going to put a little red pepper flakes, of course. What's a pizza without some red pepper flakes? This one's going to be, this is the spicy one with the franks and the buffalo and the red pepper flake. And then how about in this one we'll do a little Parmesan cheese too. Oh, not that one. That one looks a little funky. Try another one. These haven't been in here longer than I think a year because we try and dump this drawer every year. But that one looks a little funky. Hold on, let me see if I find another cheese here. <laughs> And who knew that Parmesan cheese could be out of the fridge anyway? Ooh, no. Funky. No, skip the cheese. Oh wait, there's a different brand. Let's try this one. Condiment drawer. How oh, that one looks. Oh, that one looks good. So there we go. Parmesan cheese. We'll do a couple of those. <laughs> what have you guys done with your condiment drawer? I was like, what can I make with all these condiments? Let's make meatloaf. Okay, so this side, spicy buffalo here. Oh, and I have some red pepper here. I'll put a little red, really, just because this organic red pepper 
here's the other half, was just beautiful. So I'm like, oh, let's buy that and give our meatloaf a little bit of color. Okay, so in this one here, this one's got our buffalo sauce, franks, red pepper, a little bit of mustard, some red pepper flake, and is it right? Oh yeah, mustard. So yum. And then I will put a little bit of binder in here. So I think I will do in this one a little bit of cornmeal just for fun. Okay, hold on. I have my measuring cup here. I'm going to put a little bit, probably a little bit less than half a cup, just for a little bit of binder in here. And probably like a third of a cup, a little bit of cornmeal. Just to go in there for you binder people. And I'll mix that up. Okay. Yum. Put that out of the way. Okay. Let's get that all incorporated. I think this could probably use one more buffalo in there. So I'm going to throw in one more here of our spicy buffalo. I don't see another one that is, oh, by you. Let's try th this one. I don't, I don't think I put this one in. So I think we have three, four different <laughs> restaurants in here in our spicy buffalo mix here. Oh my gosh, yum. Now it smells, now it smells like, bu like buffalo. Oh my gosh, this is going to be delish. Okay, so this one, I'm going to actually use the meatloaf pan. Now I have several, and I will show you guys one of my meatloaf pans here. This is the meatloaf pan. It has the insert so that the grease will fall to the, bo to the bottom. So out of your pork and your beef, this will drain the grease out. But what I have found is that it makes the meatloaf too dry. So I actually don't like to use the, it, the insert. So I'm just going to use the meatloaf pan. Um, and I'm going to spread. Now, if you're really watching your points or watching your calories, you definitely want to use the, the insert and let the grease fall away. But um, hey, it's COVID. <laughs> calories don't count. So I'm just going to give that a good spray because you're going to be the one cleaning it up after the fact. And I'm going to take this yummy deliciousness and put it in the meatloaf pan here. So here we go, meatloaf number one. Going in. Okay. Oh my gosh. Going to be yummy. Yum. How many of you love meatloaf like I, like I do? I love meat, meatloaf. Love, love, love it. And not too many pla pla uh, places even have meatloaf on the menu anymore. Which is a bummer because it is so yummy. They used to have it on the menu at BJ's. You know, the pizza place, but they took it off the menu years ago, but it was killer. So BJ's, bring back your meatloaf. So there we go. There's one, our buffalo chicken meatloaf. And I'm going to doll that up here in a minute. But our second one, I think what I'm going to do on this one, because I had quite a few things here of the Asian variety. So I think we're going to make this one with a little Asian flair, because why not? So I'm going to put a little sriracha, the chili sauce, put a little sriracha in there. These are going to be a little spicy, but it's how we like it around here. Spicier the better. And I'm going to put the rest of this red pepper in here, really just for, for color and because it was pretty. Now if you have zucchinis from your garden, people have zucchini, zucchinis going crazy right now, you can grate a zucchini and throw it in. And hopefully your kids won't even notice that it's there. Put a little soy sauce. We're going to go Asian variety here. I'm going to need a couple of soy sauces here. <laughs> How fun is this? Soy. There's some hoisin. Ho uh, ho uh, hoisin's a little bit sweet. So put a little bit of that in. Oh my gosh. But look at that nice dark rich flavor going in. Yeah, remember it, in our base, we already have garlic and onion in our base and pepper. Oh, I will. We'll see which one we like. The Asian or the buffalo. Now, traditionally, you put a little ketchup and mustard um, in it 
or some barbecue sauce. Like I have barbecue sauce. I was going to do one bar, uh, bar, uh, bar, uh, barbecue, but I decided to go Asian instead. So I'm looking here. What else is here? Chili sauce. Here's some, chi uh, some chili sauce. Let's use that. To stick with our Asian flair here. I think this will be good. Something different. Now, Asian meatloaf, I guess you could serve it with rice. I'm going to make um, the smashed potatoes with this. I have the little round pota potatoes. Um, they come in that organic bag of potatoes from Costco. And I'm going to parboil them, which means I'm going to pre-cook uh, them and, bo and bo bo boil them on the stove. And then once they're um, done or almost done, we pretty much done, pull them out, drain them, put them on a cookie sheet, smash them down either with the back of a glass or a measuring cup or a potato ma uh, masher and mash them and then put a little garlic and olive oil, salt and pepper on top and put them in the oven and roast them to finish them and they get crispy and yummy. So there's my little side dish tip for meatloaf. Okay, back to my things here. Let's see how many soy's we got. I think probably get another soy. Now soy is really salty so you always want to watch your salt if you're using so uh, soy sauce. And I think if there was a Chinese mu mustard here, I'd use it. Hey, assistant, do you see one here that's Chinese mustard here in our pile of everything here? Lots of soy sauce. Let's see. I don't know. I don't see one. So let's use a little bit of regular mustard, just because I think um, I think that meatloaf should have a little mustard, right? Just like hot dog and um, hamburger, they should have a little bit of mustard. So put a little bit of that in. Okay, so there's our Asian one. I'll mix this up a little bit and see how it, how it looks and how it smells. If it needs a little more doctoring up. Oh my gosh, yum. Like all those Asian, you know, flavors and smells. Oh my gosh, it smells good. I think this is going to need... Now, traditionally, I'd use Worcestershire, ketchup, mustard in a basic meatloaf. But today, we're using drive through condiment leftovers <laughs> are going in. I'm going to put one more soy sauce in here. Oh, my gosh. Yum. And this one is going to be yummy, too. I can just tell. Oh, my gosh. Yes! How fun! Seriously, I'm like, what am I going to make with all of these? Brenda, by the way, Brenda had the shout out with the idea. Brenda was like, you should make something with all those. I'm like, all right, let's make something. So we have our buffalo chicken meatloaf, and this is our Asian meatloaf surprise here. So this one, I'm going to show you if you don't have a meatloaf pan, because you don't have to have one to make meatloaf. And since meatloaf is the greatest thing, I am going to put a little binder in here. So in for a second. I'll put a little bit of oatmeal um, just to give it a binder. But normally you don't have to. I usually don't, but for you guys, I'll put some binder. So again, less than a half a cup of some oatmeal going in. And I'm not going to cook these right this second, so it'll give it time to rest and let all the flavors get absorbed into this. But those are two things that you probably have in your pantry if you don't have breadcrumbs like I don't. Um, you can either make some breadcrumbs in the food processor or use some saltine crackers or cheese crackers are yummy in this like Cheez-Its um, or any kind of crackers you like. Um, but if most people have oatmeal, they have some cornmeal, then that's what I'm using. But that's one thing about meatloaf. You can be as artistic as you possibly can think of because... Um, you can use whatever you have. So this one, I'm going to do the free form way with our meatloaf here. And I'm going to just make a loaf. Now this one's going to be a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner than this one. So um, I want them to cook about the same time. So I'll try and make it the same shape. But how beautiful is that? Voila! And what is the secret to meatloaf? What did my mom always put on the meatloaf? Anyone know what goes on top? Bacon goes on top of the meatloaf. 
because it will baste the meatloaf and come on let's face it what's not good with bacon on top <laughs> so here we go I'm gonna put a couple slices of bacon on top of each of these yum really for flavor and basting Let me make this one pretty and then on top of our Asian one here I think I'm still gonna use I think I use a little bit of chili sauce on top of this because I see one here I'm gonna need a couple of these for my topping like ketchup you could use soy I have another one here that's chili sauce we'll have to find one now I put one on here well I've got you guys watching We'll put a little chili sauce down the middle. Oh my gosh, yes, yum. It smells so good. It literally smells like, you know, all the Asian smells with the soy sauce and the hoisin and a little chili sauce on top of that one. And I will put another chi uh, chili sauce on top of that when I find one in the, pot, in the pile. But right now I will do this other one. Put our, this one of course, Let's see, our buffalo. I think maybe we use some barbecue sauce. Because why not? Let's use a little bar of barbecue sauce. <laughs> Do I ever rest? Okay, uh, Julie, I worked at Cisco for how many years? Crazy years that was. I'm in real estate full time for 20 years. Do I rest? Uh, no. <laughs> and now we can't travel. So, no, I don't rest. And here we are, do, doing this. Okay, so I'm gonna put barbecue on top of this. And you know what else I'm gonna put on top of this? Because we have our spicy, this one's gonna be spicy and buffalo. I'm gonna put some honey on this one, on the top. Oh my gosh, yes! One of the recipes I found, because I have um, uh, pancake syrup here. I have pancake syrup. Um, which we could also have used. I saw one that had pancake, maple syrup on top, and, bu and buffalo, which I thought, well, that's a cool idea. And then I dumped the drawer out and I realized, oh, I have pancake syrup. <laughs> so I could probably do that. But I'm going to put a little honey on this because we have so much spice in this one. And uh, spread this out. So this one has barbecue sauce on top, a couple packets of honey, and I'm just going to rub him in there and so in our buffalo chicken barbecue honey yumminess oh my gosh gonna be so good I want all my sauce on my meatloaf but not on my not in the sink when I wash my hands oh my gosh you guys it's gonna be yummy and then of course the bacon secret weapon always put bacon on your meatloaf because it makes it especially when you use the insert to this pan um, it really helps keep the flavor in when you auto baste it. So, oh my gosh, there's meatloaf number two ready to go. Now I'm going to put these in the fridge for a couple of hours and let the flavors all get to know each other. And then we will have um, two, two yummy meatloafs. So let me wash my hands real quick. I've got honey barbecue hands. And there we go. That is what we have made today. Two meatloafs with our uh, drive through fast food condiment surprise here. <laughs> so we, I will let you know how these turn out once we get them out um, later on. But they smell delicious. So we have our spicy buffalo barbecue version here. And then we have our Asian chili version. So we started with the same base and flavored it up with what we had here from the condiment drawer and these are going to be yummy. So if you have a condiment drawer like I do, now you have something to make with it. You can make some meatloaf, meatballs, hamburgers, um, but you can use your little condiment packages to make something new or mix the flavors together like I just did on the fly and create your own. So I hope you guys are having a super duper Saturday. We love being here. You can find um, the recipes and all the videos. Today is actually episode number 60. Uh, lucky episode number 60, if you can believe that, but that's where we are. This has been so fun. Um, I love having you guys there. Um, hey, Deb, how are you? Um, 
and we love doing it. So the recipes will be below. You can find them also on our YouTube channel, Ventura Real Estate. We do have a fabulous new listing above the college, so if you are looking for a beautiful home, a spectacular private-like park in the back, give me a call, um, and we'd love to show you that. And we look forward to talking to you soon. Remember, there's only two things you can control, your effort and your attitude. So pick a good one and always do your best. And visit us at GaryAndLisa.com. Um, and again, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Ventura Real Estate. So we will see you soon. We try and be here Wednesdays and Saturdays at 3 o'clock live. So we love it when you join us live. And we will see you on Wednesday. Talk to you soon.